Hello to whoever finds this journal. My days in Maryland have been rewarding as they are troublesome and is often dangerous. I have spent the last six years assembling my notes in hopes the knowledge I have gained over the time spent in this world to bring good fortune to whoever finds this and to help them get a better understanding of the world they are about to enter. My intent is to create a compendium of how the world works, what it has to offer, and how you can survive and prosper. There are times I feel my work will only serve more confusion about what I found, but I also felt it necessary to compose my ideas and experience to illuminate a path to those who wish to explore. Contained within are recipes, survival tips, warnings, and more, all in an effort to promote safe travels and an overall awareness of the world you are entering. There will be times when you will be tested in ways this compendium can neither prepare you for or help you from. Your choices as a player and a guild may lead to swift and unprecedented consequences. I believe this to be the ultimate guide for survival and success. Welcome to Mortal Online 2. Our journey begins in the town of Faberdum. It is a town east of Tindrum up in the mountains. Rich in Greywood, Granum, and Calyx, the town is a PvP haven and hotspot. It is also the village that the tutorial town is based from. People from all around come to this town to duel and learn combat, and that is what today's guide will be focusing on. Now, obviously, this being an open world PvP game, they can do it anywhere, but what makes Faberdum unique is its mini game outside of the town. And I'm not a combat master, I often get killed more times than I care to admit, so if anybody has advice that I may have missed or got wrong, correct me in the comments. I will pin the most helpful advice. Also, check the link in the description for tools and websites to help you throughout your journeys. Outside of town, you will see a speed course with watermelons sitting on top of stands. You race through the course and learn the different types of attacks as you have to hit the watermelons and pit carcasses with specific attacks, and at the end of the course, you get placed on a leaderboard, and you can run it as many times as you like. It's a great way to learn attack directions. Speaking of attack directions, before you go dueling and PvPing, conquering villages, you need to learn a lot about attacking, blocking, and parrying. There is a lot to the system, and I will try to break it down in the most easy, quick, and effective way possible. Mortal Online's combat is pretty unique, or at one point was unique for its time. If someone is attacking your left side, then you must block in the corresponding direction, and if done properly at the correct time, sparks will fly from your weapon, your next hit will be quick to charge, and a counterattack will take place. This is called a parry. It is vital that you master the parrying system if you want to survive in this game. I would recommend starting with walkers or scoundrels to practice your block direction and parrying but before we get into depth of the parrying system, go to your gameplay settings. At the bottom of the screen, you will see two options, one for attacking and one for defending. You have a mouse drag then click, click then drag, and keyboard direction. Due to the talented fighters in this game, I personally do not recommend using the keyboard attack and defending setting. The system works fairly well for PvE, but for PvP, it simply, in my experience, is not quick enough to react to attacks, and it makes you a little bit more easier to read when wanting to defend or attack, and it can be easily countered with a feint attack. That is when somebody charges an attack, cancels it at the last second, and charges a different attack from a different direction. Then also, in your mouse movement sensitivity, I'm not the best at foot fighting in this game, and I won't pretend to be, we are just here to talk about the system. Having a high sensitivity for me makes it much harder as the direction of your mouse moves doesn't require much movement at all to begin with. I would say start around 15 to 20 on the movement scale and adjust it from there, but that is a player preference as the combat in this game is heavily player reliant. Yes, skills matter a lot, but as MO1 quickly taught me, a good free-to-play fighter can easily beat a pay-to-play scrub, aka me. It's all about your player skill. So my recommendation is to use either click then drag or drag then click method and practice on PvE mobs. It is very important you master blocking or you will have a very rough time adapting to the combat. And as the game is open world loot drop, dying is very punishing. To build a foot fighter, you have a few options on how to do this. Make sure to check with the clad features when you build a character to make sure that the clad gifts follow a path to your envisioned build. Popular foot fighting tunes are Velen, Thursars and Humans, and in some cases Ogmir, but it is heavily debated topics, so in the comments, drop your builds. Helps guys out. 
Moving on to the character statistics, you want to have a high dexterity, high constitutions, and in some cases high strength depending if you plan to use bows, heavy axes, or club weapons. My character is a mounted archer and has 118 strength. I also subclass as a foot fighter, but due to my low dexterity, I mostly play off of defense and weapons that weigh 4 to 5 kilograms are too heavy to swing quickly and proficiently. Just to put it out there as a reference, high dex, high constitution, and a decent strength. With these stats and builds in mind, you must now choose a preferred weapon. When making a character and getting correct build, you can expect to reroll multiple times, and hopefully this guide gives you an idea of what to expect or how to build. I'm not spending another $40 on this game to go through a character build, but with quick Google searches and YouTube searches, links in the description, you can have the resources you want to get an idea of how you want to play your character or what you want to be. The weapons in this game are very basic from what you would expect in a game such as this. Swords, maces, hammers, axes, daggers, lances, spears, and bows. You also have the option for pole axes and pole swords. We will come back to those. Each weapon is proficient with different attacks such as blunt damage, piercing damage, and slashing damage, and each is effective against different armor styles and materials used in the armor, and the material the weapon is made out of will do different ranges of damage depending on the type of material that somebody is wearing. The system runs deep. Materials will also affect the weight of the weapons you are swinging and the weight of the armor you are wearing. We will cover this in a later guide. The system runs very deep in this game. Once you find a weapon of choice, let's move on to the skills you will need. You will need around 1,000 to 1,100 points to become the bully you wish to be. To make it easy, we will only talk about the primary skills, as the secondary skills do not cost skill points. You only have a total of 1,100 to build with. There's a skill called Active Regeneration, and it is debatable if you need it or not. The primary allows you to heal over time while resting. I do not find it useful in the grand scheme of things, but everyone has a preference and everybody builds differently. It's all about what you prefer. Going in order, you will need blocking and the secondary skills that come with it. From 0 to 100, it will give you a 0 to 45% knockdown resistance when blocking, and reduces damage while successfully blocking and parrying. So what that means is if you get hit by a large monster, you have a 45% chance of not getting knocked down and getting beat on. Combat Techniques is a secondary, but you will need this at 100 to level the Defensive and Aggressive Stance skills. These two skills are primary. Aggressive Stance gives you a bonus to attacking up to 5%, and Defensive gives you a bonus of taking damage up to 5%. Athletics is another secondary you will need to get to 100, so that allows your sprinting to reach 100. That controls your stamina drain when sprinting and foot speed is a secondary that determines the character speed without sprinting or a weapon out. Stamina is extremely important when you want to become a foot fighter. Under the same tree as athletics, you will see armor training. That is a vital to any combatant. It will determine the weight of the armor you can wear before becoming encumbered and how mobile you will be in the armor. Depending on your character's size and build will determine the armor weight you can carry once this skill hits 100. Next would be heavy armor training. You can find this book in the Meduli Tower for 10 gold. It is another primary that is vital and it allows you to wear the endgame heavier armor gear proficiently. Combat maneuvering is another vital skill, as it allows you to regain stamina with your weapon drawn. You want this at 100 and all the secondary skills underneath of it to be 100 as well. Do not forget about momentum and combat maneuvering. Endurance gives a stamina bonus to your character and can be leveled to 100, although it was debated near the end of MO1 if the skill was worth leveling to 100, so follow a build guide or test it yourself. My recommendation is to get it to 100 as stamina is extremely important when surviving. Anatomy is how proficient you are with bandaging or healing yourself. Get this to 100 no matter the type of fighter you are, unless of course you're a healing mage or some paladin build. Melee combat will also be at 100 as it's your proficiency with melee weapons. It's a secondary, but your weapon of choice is not. 
Choosing a melee weapon that you are comfortable with is very important to any fighter. There are a number of ways to style and craft a weapon to your liking, whether that be with a long handle or short, two-handed or one-handed, heavy or light, the types of materials you choose for the blade and handles. So while you are new, experiment with different types of weapons as the length of the weapon, the length of the handles, the weight of the weapon is all going to swing differently and have a different range of attack. So practice with a bunch of things and find something that works well for your build. Coming back to pull weapons, if you wish to use a pull sword or pull axe, they have extremely large reach and they hit pretty decently hard, you will need a hundred skill points in both spears and swords or spears and axes. So that will take 200 points to use a pull weapon. Now that that's all out of the way, let's move on to the actual combat. As a beginner, you want to practice on PvE mobs as much as possible, and practice in a friendly duel setting with your friends or guildmates. Of course, you can always join my guild, link in the description, say Grulik sent you. As I stated, the parrying system and attacking system is based off of mouse or keyboard movements, and the parrying system is timing your block in the correct direction at the correct time. All mobs in the game are on a static timer, meaning they will not change their attack speed pattern unless, of course, they parry you. So say a walker takes four seconds to complete one attack phase, unless off of a parry, the walker will always attack every four seconds. Of course, I'm just throwing a random number out there, don't take that verbatim, but that's essentially how the system works. Most of the mobs also have a different attack of animations. I say most because scoundrels and bandits, being essentially the same monster, have a same attack animation, like razorbacks and bush pigs, or cougars and panthers, but something like satyrs have a completely different set of animations from a bandit and are harder to read, like their left attack and center attack look similar to me, so it's really hard to parry, and they are on a different static timer than a bandit. So learning how the creature attacks and the timer they are set on is vital in learning the parrying system. Now, PvP parrying is completely different than PvE parrying, as there is a player attacking you, and they are random. They can use feints, hold their attacks charge slightly longer, and naturally attack at different times, like heavy attack, quick jab, quick jab, heavy attack. It is said that the first two seconds of your block is considered the parrying phase, and after that it is considered a blocking phase. If an attacker holds his attack longer than two seconds, his damage is reduced, but you have to reset your block to initiate another parry phase, or hold it for a block. Attacking off a parry, as stated, is the most effective way to attack, it is quick and does max damage. Once you get comfortable with parrying both players and PvE monsters, and you get used to your new settings and mouse sensitivity, it's time to move on to the next phase of training, and that's paying attention to your stanima bar, your regeneration, and your gray bar. Gray bar is essentially a permanent penalty on your stam or health depending on how well your reserves have lasted. If they get below a threshold, you have to rest or eat food or potions to get your reserves back up and get rid of that gray bar. So it's ideal to carry food or potions on your person at all times. Stanima is very important to any fighter, as without Stam, you will not be able to attack or move fast enough and will certainly die. To control your Stam in a large group fight, it is pretty simple to back away from the fight, get behind your allies until your bar is at a workable level. Block if you need to, keep your weapon drawn as your combat maneuvering skill will play a huge role in getting you back into the fight. In a 1v1 situation, you can accomplish this by playing smart. Play defensively, but not total defense, as that is a telltale sign that you are a new player and you will be quickly taken advantage of. Attack when you see an opening and work off of your new offensive drive. A general rule of thumb is don't let your stam drop between one third or one quarter when you're initiated into a fight. When you're traveling by horse or on foot, keep your mounts and yourself stammed above three quarters or half, as you never know what lurks over the next hill and you will be prepared for a fight. The next thing you would want to pay attention to is the equipment and armor you are using. Ensuring your armor meets your armor weight requirements will be very crucial for you to be viable in any fight situation. If the equipped armor goes over the weight you can wear, your movement speed and stamina regeneration will be heavily impacted. You will still get protected by the gear, 
but you will be slower and unable to escape as quickly. Some people do use heavier armors and succeed as a heavy tank fighter with some practice, but Stanima plays an extreme role with these types of fighters. The heavier armors generally provide better protection, but hurt your regeneration. So talk with some crafters in the game about armor with you, or comment down below if you have any tips or questions. Combat movement is extremely important to understand. Not the skill, but for you as a player and how you move around your opponent. Quickly, without wasting a lot of stam, you can do this by zigzagging, circling, or sticky backing and flanking your opponent from the outside step. Sticky backing means to get behind your opponent and to stay at the behind them as often as you can. It's very important to practice and to understand. If you stand still or run in a straight line, you will go down quick and be at a disadvantage. Personally, I sprint while 1v1ing and only back off when I regen stam or need to pop a mandate. Leveling the anatomy skill is extremely important. Your task in a 1v1 is to stay at a flank or the outside of your target and to get behind them as they will be too busy spinning in circles trying to keep you in front of them messing up their blocks. Do not run in a straight line for the target unless your name is Thavian, he's pretty good at that. Counterattacks is a very debated topic. Right after you parry, you can instantly do a fast attack with max damage. However, you must choose wisely when you decide to use your next strike. You do have a small window of opportunity before it goes away, but if you miss or someone jumps out of the way or blocks your counter, they take an advantage onto you as there is a delay during and after the counter and it limits your movement for a small amount of time. As stated earlier, it is important to learn as if your enemy knows that you can parry, they they will back off a little bit or change their technique and you must be able to adapt to their changes. Practice makes perfect and combining your strike with feints and fakes, using counters and not using counters, using your movement techniques and keeping your stam up will make you harder to kill, even if you are outnumbered. You will never go down without a fight. No amount of tutorial on YouTube or guide reading or taking notes or speaking with people will make you better at this mechanic in the game. Getting out and fighting and practicing and putting in the time is the only real way of getting better at this game. It's like playing Rocket League. I finally hit champ rank after two years of playing and even then I'm still struggling in Diamond 3. But practice will make you better. Now obviously, don't take anything I said in this video for my footage. Watch the other guys beating the crap out of me. They're much better at it. But I hope this guide has helped you in some way, whether it gave you a different view on how you approach your next fight, or a different way of thinking on when you are situated into a fight. If you have any more questions, or if you want to leave some tips for the new guys watching this video, do it down in the comments below. Also feel free to promote your guild. Check the description for important links that could help you in other aspects of the game that we will soon cover. But I hope these videos are enjoyable for you to watch and I appreciate the support. We went up like 50 subscribers. That's insane. But as always, thank you for watching.